Nate Rostin here with the Unique Automatic Controller. You'll see here that we've got the ability to lock this controller or the lid for this controller out. This is gonna protect you from inadvertently having someone operate the machine. We also have a disconnect here for the cutoff where you can, for lockout tag out purposes and also securing the machine from being turned on. So when I open this up, I'll turn the machine on. It'll go through the startup sequence. But while it's doing that, I'll go over a few of these buttons here. So when we've turned the automatic or to manual mode, now we have the ability to jog the machine forward just upon initial setup, running parts through, testing for making adjustments and whatnot, automatic or manually through these buttons here. And also with all the covers on, we have a shear down button that will cut the part off when it's done. But when the, shear, when the covers are off, we won't be able to do that. So we have buttons on the side for manual, two buttons on either side that will let you shear the part, but you have to have both hands on there. So when we go into automatic mode, you'll notice a little icon for a home key show up. And that's where we see our home screen. All right, we'll start with our manual mode. Our customers should be accustomed to this because we've had this in all of our controllers from the very beginning. Just the ability to jog the machine forward, jog reverse, and then we also have a feature which is also in uh, among some of our other series of controllers is a micro jog. So that's gonna give you just a quick bump forward or reverse with the panel going through the machine. We have the cycle shear button which again, if we're in safety mode, it will allow you to cycle the shear completely with the push of a button. You can also bring the shear down and that's gonna be good when you need to lubricate the shear as you're running out through uh, running an automatic program. For those that have notching capabilities, you'll see that you have the ability to cycle the notch individually, left or right, or male or female, or you also have the ability to bring both notches down or cycle them together as a unit. On the right here, you'll see that we have a manual part. So if I just need one part, whatever size that may be, I need one, you know, to finish the job, I need one eight footer or whatever, I can input that here and run that from that screen. I'll go back to home. Now I go into run mode. This is where you're gonna spend most of your time. Let's start by adding a new part. When we add a part, it'll give us different features that we can add into. Roof section would be like different planes of the roof, whether it be the north side or the south side or you know whatever facet of the roof that's gonna be done. So that gives us a way to differentiate one group of panels from another, okay? So let's say I wanna run five pieces, six feet long, and I just put that there. Now there's a question that's gonna be asked, do I wanna stop after the last part? So I have the ability to run 600 different series of programs or recipes of, of roof panels, and I, I wanna go from one to another without interruption. If that's, the, if that's the case, then I'll leave that blank. If I wanna stop and reselect the next program, then I'll hit that button, and that'll go through the program and then allow me to select the next program to run. But in this case, we just wanna run automatically. And for notching, if I wanna notch both ends of the panel, I'll hit that button. So the offset notch gives you the ability to add a secondary notch, either on the male or female side. That's gonna help if you have a, a hip or a valley that you're gonna be running where you're gonna cut that panel at the angle. And if you have our angle slitter, it also gives you the ability to cut that right off as you run the, the program. All right, okay. And then we'll add another part, just so you can see that it asks us, do we wanna place that new part above, below, or at the end of our, our cut list? We're gonna put this one right at the end, okay? And then the same thing, we wanna go in roof section number one and run five pieces this time at seven foot, but we wanna pause after that last part. And we also want notched ends. I'll hit okay. Now I have two multiple parts. As we begin operation, 
you'll see a couple of things here. One is the shear position. That is where the machine believes that the edge of the coil is. When we, when we run the part out upon running uh, the startup sequence, and that we have other videos that are going to show exactly how the machine is operating with this system. But once we cut it off, it'll reset to zero. And when we start our, when we do have a startup on a new coil, we hit our new coil button, and then it's going to actually go into ask you to confirm, and you hit yes. But in this case, it's going to give us a load material, and that's going to disappear when we actually run the machine it'll actually give us a window because the machine actually, the computer has to see the hydraulics running in order for it to let us jog the material through. But what we'll do when we get into new coil, we'll run the part through the machine, allow the material to come through the shear, cut it off, then we can start to run our program. Here's the ability to delete a part if we want. It's gonna ask us to confirm that one will disappear. Then it brings the other one up. We can add another part. Or we can delete all parts. We have a coil calculator here. So this is a tool that we have that you just plug in your information and it'll give you an approximate length of how much a given coil is that you might have in your shop or on your floor. The import export screen is gonna be critical for use if you have a takeoff from, let's say, from AppliCAD or one of those takeoff softwares that we are compatible with, or if you have from our website, use our Cutlass generator, this is where you would load that and where the USB plugs in and we load that onto the screen. So we can import a cut list from the Cutlass generator or from takeoff software that will spit out a cut list or one other feature which I think is really cool is that we can export cut list results and that's going to give you the results of a given job that's ran after you load it in and that's beneficial to our manufacturers that can now include that with the invoice this is the actual this is what we estimated this is what we actually ran and you can include that in your uh, your invoice to your customer. Status screen. Status screen, this is where we're able to double check our input. We have the part presence sensor, or that's our proximity sensor. If there's a part sticking out of the machine, it's gonna, it's gonna highlight that. So it just kind of helps me, gives me the ability to check the different inputs and switches and make sure things are working properly. Hydraulic total time, that's gonna give you basically like the running time, like say in your vehicle, that you know how long it's been operating um, and it'll just keep track of the hours that you've been operating the machine. The encoder millimeter, millimeters per count, um, that's a setting that is unable, the customer's unable to change unless they go into the engineering uh, portal to change those things and it's not gonna be necessary for them to change that. The stopping distance, is controlled by the, the coding of the system itself. And this is important because that's what regulates the length of the machine as, or lengths of the parts coming out as the machine runs. It's gonna be based on cold machine versus hot machine, uh, the speed of the roll former. So if you're running a gas roll former, the throttle controls the speed of the roll former. And it's also gonna control or, or regulate or monitor the amount of drag that's on the coil. So if I've got a 2,000 square foot coil that I'm running and now it's down to 500 square feet, it's gonna be less drag on that coil because it's not as heavy. And it will monitor those lengths as they come out and do a correction. So that stop reaction distance will actually change from time to time. And typically we tell the customers they don't need to change it, just uh, observe it and monitor how it runs the parts out. The link totalizer, that's basically gonna give you the, the length of panels that have been run or the overall total of lengths that I've run throughout a given period of time, whether that's weekly, daily, per job, annually, however you would uh, reset that. Also, it will give you the length of the last part ran 
So if you wanted to check what you were running, you can go here, see how long was that last part, and then measure it just to confirm that it was running correctly. And then the program length, which is actual what it was supposed to run. So the length of the last part is what the machine thought it run. The program length is what was programmed. So we can use that in conjunction with the stopping distance to know how our machine is performing on the lengths of the parts coming out. Length calibration. In the past, we've had machines where you run a panel out, you monitor it or you measure it, and then you're able to kind of measure that, plug in the data, and it'll change. What we've done is to eliminate having a wasted part, we actually take the data from the last part ran, plug into the actual length of that part, and that's how we calibrate. So we'll, we'll add in the length of the last part, and then we'll actually m measure that part as accurately as possible and plug that in. We want that part to be at least 10 foot long, but we're using data versus wasting a part that's running out. And if we run a, uh, if we have a notching machine, the length calibration is a little more involved and we'll get into that in a later video. The, the setting screen is pretty involved. So what this does gives you, you can change the unit of measure from feet and inches to inches only to feet and inches with a decimal. So in other words, I got 27 feet, 1.2 inches, or I can do decimal inches. Well, I got 237.5 inches. So instead of having to input a fraction, you're now just doing a decimal and you can do millimeters as well. Now the enable the slitter function is only for those that have the, the slitter attachment on the end of their roll former. And in that case, you didn't, you didn't, you turn that on and then you could set how long the part runs out before it stops so you can use the slitter. But in this case, we'll turn that off. The shear delay is a function that makes sure that your parts sheared off completely. We can change that anywhere from one to 30 seconds. Uh, just make sure, you know, just gives us a pause in between parts as that gets sheared off, make sure it shears off completely. Now, if you remember when we went through the input of the recipe, there was a question that said, do we want to pause after that last part or do we want to continue on into the next part in the sequence? And you can change that default to yes or no here on the, uh, the setting screen. The machine link is how we control the, the length of the tabs as the machine runs notched panels on the ends. So let's say for instance, I've got a, a short tab on the trailing end and a long tab on the leading end. I'm actually gonna shorten the machine length in order to bring that those tabs closer to even because we wanna make sure they're even. Some customers wanna adjust that, but we show them how to do it that way. All right, so we go straight for advanced settings. We have the, the curve, which is this, the slug that gets cut out in between panels. The machine length, we just went over. That's where we control the lengths of the tabs. Millimeters counts per revolution. We're not gonna adjust that at all. We're gonna leave that set as it is. The stopping distance sample size. So as we were discussing that stopping distance, we'll monitor how often the machine will take a batch of panels and re regulate that, that stopping distance. We've got it currently set at five. That's where it's always been set. I would suggest we leave it set at five. The VFD is a variable frequency drive, which does not apply to this machine. It's a different drive for a different machine. And also the millimeters per count is also another setting that we won't change. The totalizer we went over before, there's just, we, we do have multiple fields throughout different screens where you can see just for familiarity or for uh, convenience as the customer looks at the screen. We'll go back one, notch settings. So this is where we activate notching. And then we also have the tray warning that we can activate, which is necessary to keep track of how many notches that we've cut out so that our, our scrap doesn't build up in our tray and cause a jam 
by stacking those slugs. And do we want to default notch the ends? If I'm running a notch program, I'm going to hit yes so that each, I don't have to apply that setting to each recipe. Shear disable settings, that's for an auxiliary shear that we may sell. We, there are some aftermarket shear setups that, that, that are available that do work with our machine. This is where we would go into and set the distance and configure that to run with that auxiliary shear. VFD, again, that's the variable frequency drive. This does not apply for this machine. The hot melt settings, if, if I have a hot melt system that I'm running with my con controller or with my machine, I can adjust the, the warm up time, which is the actual delay when the panel starts to run and the, when the panel reaches the nozzle before it starts to spit out the hot melt glue to go into the panel. The notching offset distance, if I am running a hip or a valley with notching that's going to get cut off, I don't want to put glue in that part of that panel that's going to get cut off. This is where they add that, especially if it's on the female side. If it's on the male side, it doesn't matter. But if it's on the female side, I want to make sure I'm not putting glue in a part that I'm going to cut off. Error reset. If I, if I have an error, I can hit my reset here, and that'll just wipe out any error that I had, and I can start from the very beginning. To exit the HMI, this is where we would go out of the HMI directly into the controller so that we can update a software update. Okay, and I'm going to go back, and that's it.